Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports and today, a bit of an unusual video for me, somebody's asked me to tell them the differences between the Zeiss V4 and V6 ranges. Now that's quite an interesting goal to do because they're both seen as premium optics but you know scope ranges rarely ever have identical offerings and that's between manufacturers and this actually does illustrate the fact that even, that, even Zeiss themselves haven't produced an identical optic between one range and the other range. So to go through some of the similarities between the V4 and the V6, the differences between the V4 and the V6, well, let's go ahead. So you can see there are two scopes here. Now this is a V4, that's a V6. I've been using this V6 on the CZ Ergo. I used the V4 on a 223 CZ600 uh, Alpha. Both of them gave me perfectly good performance. Both of them were able to shoot great groups on target and to prove the rifles and do some hunting related activities as well. So to look at some of the similarities first, you can clearly see between the two of them that they've got very similar looks in terms of the tube finish on the aluminium. They're both 30 millimeter tubes in terms of the knurling and things like that to give grip. Also things like the lens caps, which are rubber strands and they go over the top and lock in place like that. They've also both got fast focus eyepiece, which goes from plus two to minus three diopter. Other similarities, these are both 30 mil tubes. They're both using the Zeiss number 60 reticle. They're both illuminated. So that number 60 reticle has a little red dot in the center. They've both got Zeiss's full range of multi-coating options and low two techs included within that for water dispersion. And there's also the 400 millibar pressure rating for water resistance as well. They both have 90 millimeters eye relief, which is exactly the same and ideal for a sporting rifle. They also have a square adjustment range of 200 centimeters at 100 meters for primary zero and aftermarket dialing. But this is where now we're going to diverge and talk about some of the differences between the two. So, number one, the Zeiss V4 is a four times erector tube, which means that the primary magnification level, whether it be four or two or three or whatever like that, is multiplied four times as you go up through the zoom range. The V6 has, surprisingly enough, a six times erector tube, which means it has a six times zoom range. So you go from figures like two to 12 or three to 18. That's regardless of the objective lens size. The V4 is made in Japan. The V6 is made in Germany. And as well as that, there are some of the slight tendencies that fit with that in terms of the V6 is a full metric scope. So it's got centimeter, 100 meter clicks, which is 0.1 milliradian. The Japanese made V4 uses minutes of angle. And although you get the same overall adjustment range, the click values on this are quarter MLA. So that suits some people, doesn't suit others. And for hunting optic, which you're most likely to zero at one distance anyway, it probably isn't going to matter to you that much. It's only in terms of if you are shooting long range and your head works mathematically in either minutes of angle or milliradians. Following on from that, the V6 is available with ASV turrets, which do allow you to dial for additional ranges for longer distances or shorter distances to suit your hunting requirements. You can still dial the V4, but you need to take the cap off and there's a dial underneath and of course you do need to remember your dimensions and how many clicks you're going to use in any direction. In terms of turret setup itself, both of them offer a lift up to zero capability. So once you've actually, once you've set that, you just lift that, turn the dial until it marks zero and that you know is your zero distance. The V4 is the same and that's if you don't have the ASV option on a V6. Both scopes have reticle illumination, but they work slightly differently in terms of the external controls. On the V6, the left side turret here, you click that out and that illuminates the reticle and you turn it left or right, clockwise, anti-clockwise, to change the intensity, pop it back in to switch it off. They do both use the same CR2032 battery under the left side cap. In comparison, the V4 has 10 illumination intensity settings and you simply click between whichever intensity you want. And there are also off positions centrally between them. This V4 is actually also parallax adjustable, but we'll talk about that more in a moment. Now, when we talk about the scope offerings that there are in terms of magnification and objective size, I'm going to have to read this one off a list. So in the V4, you can have a one to four by 24. So that's one to four times magnification with a 24 millimeter objective lens, driven board, driven game, etc., like that. 
into the more conventional sporting optics we're familiar with in the UK. There's a 3 to 12 by 56, a 4 to 16 by 44, a 4 to 16 by 50, and a 6 to 24 by 50. So those are all again lowest to highest magnification and objective lens size. Comparing that to the V6 range, you move on to a 1.1 to 6 times magnification by 24mm objective length. Again, that's the driven ball one. There's a 2 to 12 by 50, a 2.5 to 15 by 56, a 3 to 18 by 50, and a 5 to 30 by 50. So you've got, again, a broad magnification range. And the whole point of having either a 4 or a 6 times erector tube with that much magnification is that you can go from lower to higher magnification. So for example, I'm now going to actually concentrate on two specific models, which aren't these ones in front of you, but they're the ones I sort of feel are the closest in specification in terms of familiarity for a UK hunter. And I'm going to look at the 3 to 12 by 56 V4 versus the 2.5 to 15 by 56 V6. So immediately you go lowest magnification, which is 3 on the V4 or 2.5 on the V6. That goes up to 12 on the V4 or 15 on the V6. So you've got slightly broader range of magnification which might suit your hunting scenarios more or less. In terms of image quality between the scopes, there's very little to discuss, there's very little to differentiate. But in terms of the technical figures, the V4 offers 90% light transmission, which means that 90% of whatever light comes in through your objective, theoretically, reaches your eye. The V6, that raises slightly to 92%, so you will get a fractionally brighter image. Comparing some of the critical statistics, specifically field of view, on the V4, 3 to 12, you've got 12.7 to 3.2 metres width of visible at 100 metres. Compare that with the 2.5 to 15 on the V6, you've got 16.4 to 2.7 metres wide. Now, where that's quite critical is that you can tell by having high magnification at the top and low magnification at the bottom, you do slightly change those field of view statistics. But actually, if you take similar values through the range, proportionally, they're almost identical. So for example, if you were using either scope on four or six or eight times, you would hardly be able to notice any difference physically with your eyes. It's only really under laboratory conditions where you'd be able to tell the difference between that. Again, on those two scopes, in terms of proportional size, the V4 is actually slightly longer than the V6. The V4 is 368mm, the V6 is 352mm. Again, for the closest specification, I think, between the V4 and V6 ranges. Proportional mass between the two, again, shows the V4 quite light at 610 grams, the V6 a little bit heavier at 690 grams. But you do have to take into account that the specifications for both scope ranges are very detailed and extensive on the Zeiss website, and I would thoroughly recommend looking at it, because my point here today is just to give you an idea of the factors and differences to look at, not specifically to compare and contrast the two, because they're never identical at any specification or price point. Well I hope that video has given you a few little starting points to sort of like a kitten pull on a thread and look at the differences between specific optics in the Zeiss range, especially concerned with V6 versus V4. Look at the magnification levels you want, look at the pros and cons of the functionality you're going to get and remember that the lower the magnification the less likely you are to need parallax whereas if you go up to the V4 or V6 in the 6 to 24 or 5 to 30 magnification ranges yes parallax adjustment is mandatory at those magnification levels. The fact that one is made in Germany and one is made in Japan doesn't matter to me because both of them have superb manufacturing cultures and quality control. I've used both scopes extensively on the CZ rifles and I'm happy with either. They've been swapped backwards and forwards between various test projects and review rifles and I've never had a problem. And that two metre square at 100 metres of elevation and windage adjustment also means it's easy to zero on most rifles. I'm also running an advert for the British Shooting Show on my videos at the moment, so please go all the way to the end of the video and you can actually click a link on screen which will take you directly to the site so you can buy tickets and tickets to the show in 2023 also include car parking. Thank you for watching, please like, subscribe, comment, don't forget to click the notification bell so you can keep track of my weekly uploads. Thank you for watching, bye for now.